Philippine government declared an enhanced community quarantine over Luzon Island on March 12. Local government units nationwide followed suit on their own terms and conditions. Curfews and checkpoints were in place. People quarantined and isolated themselves, all in the hope of stopping the spread of COVID-19. Public places went from full to empty. Vehicle traffic went from heavy to light and to zero eventually as movement was restricted. We want everything to go back to normal. We so want to get the vaccine so everyone can play, work, and do things as before. Vaccination is creating a herd immunity where everyone becomes immune to the virus. Problem is, the vaccine is available hopefully in 18 months. The alternative solution to this COVID-19 crisis is to infect the healthy population with the virus so they become immune in the shortest possible time and get back to their usual routine. This is herd immunity by natural means. What about the immunocompromised or people with comorbidities? They should be protected from the virus by all means possible. The coronavirus NCOV is not deadly. One such deadly virus is Ebola, which can kill an infected person in hours. But Ebola also manifests symptoms immediately that identification of an infected individual is easy and therefore contained before infecting others. NCOV is not deadly, but its incubation period is long, so before symptoms manifest, an asymptomatic individual would have infected several people he has come in contact with. COVID-19 is highly contagious because viral shedding happens before the incubation period when symptoms have not yet manifested. But the good thing is, unlike Ebola, one has the luxury of time or window time for mediation or care of an individual infected with NCOV. The virus has been found to be deadly to the immunocompromised or people with pre-existing medical conditions. In fact, statistics show that 1% are asymptomatic. The majority at 80% experience only mild symptoms, and out of those who experience severe symptoms, some 5-10% to become critically ill. Thus, with the majority of the population safe to the virus, efforts and resources can be focused on the sickly 10%. To intentionally infect the healthy population with the virus, either we let them purposely get in contact with people sick of COVID-19 or we simply let them go out and do as in normal days. It can also be controlled, meaning only a certain number of people will be allowed to go out and their health should be monitored regularly. Slowly, the healthy population will develop a herd immunity to NCOV. While at this, the rest shall be housed in shelters while waiting for the vaccine, which can take at least 18 months. Now to segregate the healthy from the immunocompromised, the government shall deputize the hospitals to give out badges or passes to healthy people. The healthy people can go back to their lives before the pandemic. If you think about it, this is not something new. Companies and offices require physical examinations for their workforce, which comprise around 60% of the Filipino population. Sick people will be sent to nursing homes or shelters like hotels to quarantine them. The healthy will be released from the enhanced community quarantine in a staggered manner. Hospitals will perform the usual functions looking after the healthy who turn out to be with severe symptoms which should be unlikely given strict health guidelines. This is the fastest way to get the economy running again. The immunocompromised then awaits the available vaccine to immunize them as well. We will no longer be in need of so much test kits. The quantity of kits may be allocated to the immunocompromised who may need immediate attention. All the value hypothesis herein espoused remain unvalidated. Validation can be accomplished with studies on simulations, logistics, sound medical and applicable laws, besides need execution. Medical tests to assess the physical fitness and health of individuals should be in place and as stringent as they can be. This requires a multidisciplinary approach from field experts, computer programmers to build a simulation assessing different scenarios, industrial engineers to handle logistics, medical experts to assess the fitness and health of all Filipinos and the guidelines for assessment, legal luminaries to study the legal framework and implications 
of the scenarios and a biological system's need to oversee all this. Ultimately, the optimal number of healthy people to be released on a regular staggered basis should be identified considering factors such as the carrying capacity of hospitals. Here's a look at how scenario analysis using computer simulations can differentiate situations without intervention, the current ECQ, and that of controlled herd immunity.